On today's show, German automakers are rocked by accusations of testing exhaust emissions on monkeys and humans. We've got more details on Porsche's Mission E electric car, and we'll show you some never seen before details on Tesla's Model 3. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the automotive industry. The German diesel scandal will not go away. The New York Times reports that Volkswagen, BMW and Daimler commissioned experiments on monkeys, exposing them to diesel fumes. As if that was not bad enough, a report from Germany revealed that the same group performed similar tests on humans. About 25 people had to breathe diesel exhaust during a study conducted by Aachen University in Germany. The university defended the trial and said it was approved by an independent ethics board. However, a number of politicians have condemned the tests and are calling for an investigation. It's not known if the automakers were aware of the tests, but they have promised to perform internal investigations into the allegations. To boost sales of zero-emission vehicles, California's Governor Jerry Brown proposed a $2.5 billion plan to extend subsidies for ZEVs and expand the state's network of EV and hydrogen stations. By 2030, California aims to have 5 million ZEVs on its roads. That means 40% of all vehicles sold will need to be emission-free, up from just 5% today. The proposal still needs to be approved by the legislature. Even though the Chinese market is booming, the Ford Motor Company is struggling there. Last year, sales were down and it lost market share. And now Reuters reports that Ford's top executive in China, Jason Lowe, is leaving the post after only five months on the job. Ford says it has to do with personal reasons and not his performance or business results. In the fourth quarter of last year, Ford sold about 452,000 vehicles in the Asia-Pacific region, mostly in China. But it only made a $5 million profit. To put that in perspective, we calculate that Ford makes that much profit in one shift at one assembly plant making F-Series trucks. Coming up next, more EV news from Porsche and Mercedes. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by... Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Porsche is tapping into knowledge gained from its hybrid Le Mans car for its upcoming all-electric car, the Mission E. Like the track car, it will have an 800-volt system, which is double that of current systems, and will feed into lithium-ion batteries. When paired with a new accumulator-type 800-volt charger, which is still in the prototype phase, Porsche claims the car can get 400 kilometers, or about 250 miles of range, in just 20 minutes. The Mission E is scheduled to come out sometime in 2019. Speaking of electrified vehicles, Mercedes says it will electrify its entire commercial model lineup. You can already order an electrified version of the Vito van, which will be delivered in the second half of this year, and the automaker just announced the third generation of Sprinter van will also be electrified and should come out in 2019. We've only seen one teaser shot for the new Sprinter, but it will make its official debut in less than a week. Mercedes will also unveil the new A-Class in just a couple of days, and here's a teaser to give you an idea what the front-end styling will look like. Car racing junkies were jubilant the winter break was over with the 52nd running of the 24 hours of Daytona. Despite running into problems, Cadillac took first and second overall in the prototype class and set a new distance record going 2,876 miles in 24 hours, 116 miles further than the previous record. Ford's GT dominated the GT Le Mans class, finishing 1-2 and a lap ahead of their competitors. And Lamborghini won the GT Daytona class, the first time Lambo ever won a 24-hour race. We say congratulations to all, but especially to Lamborghini, which had to beat out Acura, Audi, BMW, Ferrari, Lexus, Porsche, and Mercedes to get the win. Coming up next, 
Monroe & Associates is tearing down a Tesla Model 3, and we'll show you what they're finding under the hood. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. A lot has been written about Tesla's Model 3, but those reports mostly come from EV enthusiasts and owners. By all accounts, they love the car, but so far no one with deep experience in design, engineering, and manufacturing has evaluated it, at least not publicly. That's why we were excited to get an invitation from Sandy Monroe to visit his shop and take a look at a Model 3 that he's about to test and tear down for a competitive benchmarking study. And Sandy found a number of issues that he really doesn't like about the car, which he pointed out to Autoline's John McElroy. Take a look. Sandy, one of the things that you pointed out to me was it's almost impossible to open this hood easily. Easily is, uh, <laughs> this thing is a, a miserable job. And, and we've uh, come to the conclusion that these, uh, these guys at Tesla are definitely electronic snobs. <laughs> they don't let anything slide by. So to get in here, um, and the reason you need to get in is, is basically if you have an accident uh, and you, you need to get rid of the power, you have to cut this cable twice, okay? Here why, here. why twice? Uh, that would be so it doesn't short out. Uh, so it can't get back so you, together all by itself. Uh, you know, you might cut this and it would short back in and close the circuit and still be, still be live. So you cut it here and you cut it there and then you don't have any problems. So that part's pretty traditional and there's nothing wrong with that. But to get to this, to get to the point where you can actually open the hood, <coughs> um, you, you have to go over here. Let me show you uh, with a little light here. Um, this little doodad right here, this little uh, part of the fascia, um, you're supposed to push that in or pull it out somehow. And then inside there's two cables. You have to pull those cables out. You have to have a set of jumper cables and you have to have a 12 volt battery so that you can connect to the two, uh, to the two leads and that'll pop the hood. Um, we've never seen anything like this. Usually there's some kind of a mechanical thing that'll allow the fire department to get in easily. Usually it's in the inside of the uh, cab. Now there is on the, <clears throat> the big screen there a button that you can push that will exactly. pop the hood. But yeah. in an accident, if you lose power, there's no way well, to get under the hood unless you go through this thing. It's more than losing power. I mean, in an accident, I'm pretty sure that that, uh, that uh, uh, monitor is going to take a hit. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like too much excitement. So getting people out is kind of, you only got seconds. I mean, when the fire department is showing up, they're not going to go and dive in and start clipping because they could wind up cutting something that, like a main power cable, it could kill them. So this is really important. This is something that they have to have. It's a safety have. issue. And this is slow. By my, I, if I was in this car and wanted somebody to cut me out, I'd want something to move faster than that. Sandy has also presented us with teardowns he did of the BMW i3 and Chevrolet Bolt EV. He's actually quite bullish on battery electrics and called the i3 the most important car since the Ford Model T. So he's not one of those anti-EV people but he does have some issues with the engineering of the Model 3. All this week, we'll be showing you what he's uncovered, so don't miss tomorrow's installment. But with that, we wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.